So I want you to avoid making this mistake when a man seems like he's pulling away. So we're going to dive into this. So what are some of the reasons why a man will pull away and some of the things you should or shouldn't do, at least from my perspective anyways? I think it depends on where you're at in the stage of your relationship with someone. So if you're in the first early stages, let's just say date zero to or date one to 10, okay? You have to ask yourself, have you really established a relationship with this person from date one through 10? Or let's say at least one through five. Maybe that might be a little bit better. And, and there's a reason why I'm differentiating the dates more than five, because oftentimes these days when people are getting to know each other, there's this natural gravity to have some uncertainty in the dating process, because when you're meeting a total stranger, when you don't know each other that very that well, and you have some differences, all of a sudden those differences might cause doubt. And within doubt is uncertainty. And within uncertainty, you might be going through this push pull, or a man might be experiencing this kind of move forward, pull away, move forward, pull away. Now you have to recognize that within men in particular, we've been most men have been indoctrinated that men are the hunters of a relationship and men are the leaders of the relationship and men are the provider protectors. So they are usually the initiators of the dates, okay? Now, oftentimes that's driven by a biological need to have physical intimacy with someone. So again, you've heard me say this before when you've been told that men are the hunters and men love the chase, just remember ask yourself, what are these men actually chasing? Okay. So when a man has uncertainty, he could literally pull away after the first, second, third, fourth, fifth date. And that's just part of the natural process um, that happens because we have a lot of uncertainty with someone in the beginning. And also the other facet that exists today that didn't exist 30 plus years ago is internet dating. See, now we have an abundance of opportunities. There's this perceived that there's always someone better around the corner. So when a man pulls away in those early stages, we have to just kind of suck it up, whether we like it or not, and recognize that that's just going to happen when you're meeting a total stranger. Now, when you start to have a more evolved relationship with a man, you've actually begin to call each other boyfriend and girlfriend to one another. What are some of the reasons why men pull away? Well, some of the primary reasons is that I would say most men that pull away, oftentimes the ground underneath them isn't solid. They're going through a contentious relationship with their ex. They're going through issues in their professional life. They have issues with maybe their children in their life. Maybe they have health issues. The ground underneath them doesn't feel solid. So when this happens to a man, he might be interested in you from that physical, biological perspective, but he may not be capable of going any deeper from an emotional perspective, okay? And that's one of the primary reasons why men pull away. The other primary reason why a man will pull away is that he has doubts about you. He has doubts about you. And he doesn't know how to express those doubts to you in a way that can be seen and heard and understood. So men oftentimes, after the initial stage of getting their physical intimacy met, they will pull away emotionally because they believe that by pulling away emotionally, they don't want to make a promise they can't keep on an emotional level. In other words, they don't want to even remotely perceive any love between the two of you because that's a promise for the future. This is why some men keep distance from women because they're happy to get some occasional companionship, occasional sex, occasional connection without anything deeper because they're not cap either capable of going there or they actually have doubts with you. This is why some of the most popular relationships today include hooking up, friends with benefits, situationships, and casual relationships. Those are the primary relationships in our dating marketplace today. See, very few couples are actually exploring a serious relationship. Now, women have this belief that men, when they're pursuing you physically, they have a long-term mating strategy. So you got to recognize that there's a big difference between men who are what's known as grower builders, 
I put, I put my hand on myself because I'm a grower builder. In other words, I lead with the desire for a significant relationship early in the dating conversation. Men who act ambivalent, men who act uncertain, men who claim they don't want anything serious. See, men who don't claim any of those things, they, they have a short-term mating strategy. They operate from the belief that if I love someone, I'll commit to them. Instead of I'm capable of commitment and I will choose a person that fits what I'm looking for, that's what a grower builder does. So what are some of the mistakes you've been told? Certainly by the dating rhetoric out there, they will tell you to do the no contact rule, the no contact rule. Okay. In other words, you should let a man suffer through no contact when he pulls away. Because when you lean back in your feminine energy and live your wonderful life on social media, he will see this and he'll come running and chasing after you. This is what I think of that. Uh, and if a man comes running and chasing after you because he was triggered, by an unhealthy wound, trust me, you will be doing this dance all day long if you play this game. Now, recognizing that when someone pulls away, they're taking space. Well, guess what? When they take space, that's a great opportunity for you to take space, to detach from the experience and ask yourself about the merits of this relationship. Really look. Have we established, I'm, I'm talking about those people that have gone on, they've, they've agreed to being boyfriend and girlfriend. Remember, not those early stages, those first couple of weeks of those people that had one to five or 10 dates. I'm talking about those that have more of an established relationship. It's time to really evaluate the merits of the relationship. Now, I'm going to tell you a quick story. I This was a woman I went on 10 dates with, and by the eight night date. We had physical intimacy a couple times, and then I completely pulled away. And she sent me a text message saying, hey, I, I get the sense you're pulling away. Am I right? And I said, yeah. And and I'm, I'm not happy that we did this via text, but that's what ended up happening. As I reflected upon the relationship, I didn't really, I recognized that I didn't feel what I thought I should be feeling at this point. About 10 dates in, I realized I wasn't feeling love for her. Now, I don't mean, you know, um, I certainly felt a little bit of lust in the beginning um, because I'm a guy, you know, I feel lust for almost every woman I look at, okay? I'm just going to be honest about that. Uh, Harry Met Sally talked about that. Okay, but... Um, she she asked me a question and I said, yeah, I'm I'm not feeling what I should, what I think I should be feeling at this point. And she says, do you normally feel this at this point? I said, yeah. In other words, I didn't lack the motivation or desire to move forward. And we ended up effectively having a text message that ended the relationship. Now, some people will say by sending that text message, you're chasing him. No, you're not chasing him. You're seeking clarity. If you're asking yourself, should I, should I send a text? Then if you're going to send a text, ask the question. I get the sense you're pulling away. Has something come up for you? That's not chasing, that's seeking clarity. But Jonathan, I'm just told to sit back on my feminine energy because that's what I'm told to do. <laughs> I know some of you get irritated when I do that. Um, I don't even know what that means to be in your feminine energy. Just how about being in your in sovereign, your sovereign empowered energy? Let's not put a label to masculine and feminine here. But when a person takes space, that's an opportunity for you to lean in and ask yourself, can this relationship grow? And what's the path for deeper connection? You can make a request for you can make a request for connection to get clarity. You can make a, a bid for you can make a request to talk about this at a sincere heart-centered level. But I invite you to ask yourself these questions. If you're pining over a guy, what qualities in him do I most admire? And ask yourself these questions 
you know, do you, do you wish you have, like, do you have these same qualities within yourself? Like really ask yourself, why am I pining over somebody that I, I've known for only a few weeks or months? You know, what qualities within them do I admire? Like really sit with that question. I think many of you are, are unaware of the unhealthy attachment human beings experience with one another. And if you're not familiar with these two books, I highly recommend getting the book Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller and read the book Getting the Love You Want by Harbell Hendricks and Helen Hunt. Understand that we oftentimes are attached, believing that it's love because it's an unhealthy, insecure attachment we feel to another human being. See, relationships are a place for individual growth as well as couples growth. Relationships trigger our need for deeper healing. Relationships are, okay, look at some relationships are short-lived. They're a season for growth. Some relationships are long-term. There's deeper growth where two people can do it from a partnership perspective. Oh, by the way, it was 11-11 a second ago. <laughs> See, I am a big proponent of asking the radically honest questions early on in the process to be vulnerable, to be authentic, to be transparent with one another, to stop this naive way of dating today. We have such, look at, there is this strong belief that, or there's this strong expectation, particularly of women, I need to be romanced to fall in love. I need to be romanced. This man has to prove himself to me. He has to romance me. He has to entertain me. Do you realize how many women are romanced, entertained, and a man proves himself only to break her heart later on down the road? Now, let me retract that. When I say break her heart, to be disappointed that the relationship didn't go anywhere because honestly, she didn't do a good job vetting to determine compatibility, to determine shared values, to determine lifestyle compatibility, and more importantly, to determine emotional maturity. And because we're swimming in a sea of emotional dysfunctionality, it is imperative to ask these deeper questions even before you meet someone for a first date. But Jonathan, that's gonna sound like an interview. Yes! <laughs> You should be interviewing. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. Let's say you hired a matchmaker, okay? Now, a matchmaker will interview you and ask you question after question after question after question after question after question. And then they'll interview a guy and ask question after question after question after question to determine compatibility before you ever meet. So why aren't we becoming our own matchmaker? See, that's the way I would invite everyone to avoid making the mistake of believing because we our current system of dating is if we have amazing chemistry, it's just going to be so magical. We have this wonderful chemistry. It's so magical. Come on. Do I really have to explain myself over and over and over and over again here? See, unfortunately, we've been indoctrinated with a narrative throughout our lifetime that is based on transactional and conditional relationships for the purpose of practical needs being met, for the purpose of physical needs being met, and yes, the entertainment and the fun of one another. Do you know what most relationships lack today? Because they're mostly focused on hooking up, friends with benefits situations and casuals. What they're missing is a deeper dive into the emotional and more importantly, the spiritual aspects that a healthy relationship can envelop when you're approaching it from a more conscious, intentional place. So I'm here to observe that most human beings are a bit broken. I'm, now, by the way, I, I, let's just say we're all perfect, perfectly broken, okay? Some more than others. Some are deeply wounded from their past, whether it's their childhood wounds or adult traumas that makes it very difficult for them to really open up from a secure love attachment style. And this is why people pull away because they are in a place of, of pain or fear 
what usually causes a man or woman to pull away is pain or fear. And our mistake is to play the games that we've been taught in the dating marketplace instead of really opening up from a heart-centered level and express what your needs are. I have a need for emotional connection. I have a need for vulnerability, authenticity, and transparency. I have these needs. And if I'm going to open up my heart and my body to you, then I want to start with a foundation of building deep trust with one another. How do we build trust with another? You know how we build trust? Through social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal, our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy, and a connection with something greater than oneself with the intent to do something more permanent, like either move in together, or get married. That's how we build trust, by establishing the standard right from the get-go, the rules of engagement and being radically honest with one another because when two people approach the process conscious and intentional, they have a greater chance for relationship success. So avoid the mistake of playing the games, the no contact rule. When someone pulls away, I invite you to lean in and open up dialogue to talk about what's going on. And if it's not right for them, it's not right for you. Let me repeat that. If it's not right for them, it's not right for you. And it's okay to walk away. And maybe next time you'll approach the process with a little bit more sovereignty instead of naivety. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. If it is, post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos as well. And if you want to connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call, to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery, to follow me on Instagram, to get all the books I recommend, all listed below. And I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a titty bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.